Hey, Carm Capriato here, and welcome to another special interview from Apex 2018. I'm with Mark Bogdansky and Chris Gardner, who talk the power and value that is Apex. Mark and Chris lead an extraordinary team that help make Apex what it is today. Here's a taste. Um, the logistical challenge this year was we lost our outdoor space, so we had to bring it inside, and it became Mobility Garage. And, you know, finding that next thing, so Mobility Garage where we're doing our underhood training, where we're doing training on alternative vehicles and alternative fuel vehicles, hybrids, electric cars, electric, yeah, right. um, uh, hydrogen-powered vehicles. Uh, and, you know, we, we feel it's really important that technicians start learning on these vehicles because if you can't work on a hybrid car, if you can't work on an electric vehicle car, you're going to be out of business soon. And we, and we want to make sure that, you know, the, People aren't just going back to the dealers to work on these cars. We want them going to their local garages working on these cars. Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hi, Carm Capriato here, and in a few moments, Mark Bogdansky, who is the Senior Director of Meetings and Events at Auto Care Association, joins Chris Gardner, MAAP, who is the Vice President of the Automotive Aftermarket Suppliers Association, AASA. Now, together, these associations own Apex, and they work hand-in-glove to create this yearly extraordinary event. This episode is brought to you by Federal Mogul Motor Parts and Garage Gurus. For serious technical training and support, online, on-site, and on demand. Garage Gurus is everything you need to know when it comes to training. Find out more at fmgaragegurus.com. Hey, I'm giving away some podcast collector swag, and you can get some. Just listen to this episode to get the December 2018 password, and then go to remarkableresults.biz slash swag and enter. You're up for a collector's coffee mug and super nice mouse pad. The drawing will be held the first week of January 2019, and in just a bit, I'll tell you the password. Hey, don't forget to check our photos page with pics from Apex 2018 in case you missed the event. Check out all CarmCasts we do live on Facebook and learn tons of things. Look for the CarmCast page on the website. And, oh yes, visit the books page to find the books that your peers are reading. The Auto Care Association and the Automotive Aftermarket Suppliers Association, AASA, are valued partners working together to meet the needs of the industry and stay ahead of the curve. They co-own Apex, where the global automotive aftermarket gathers to learn and find the next opportunity in this $740 billion industry. Mark and Chris and their teams under the leadership of Bill Hanvey from Auto Care and Bill Long from AASA bring educational sessions, networking events, and live demonstrations to help you grow your aftermarket business. There are more and more service professionals appreciating the value of the expo and the access to training that Apex is focusing on. Chris and Mark know that the service professional is the most important part of the food chain, which is why the focus at Apex is training on tech trends and management. Where else could you meet a manufacturer or supplier executive and ask them for help or offer up a suggestion? One of their observations, they say, is they're seeing more and more technologies showing up in the Apex booths. Now find Chris Gardner and Mark Bogdansky's bios, links to their previous episodes, and the episode's talking points at remarkableresults.biz slash E385. Enjoy a dose of your smart daily supplement only here at Remarkable Results Radio. Enjoy a behind-the-scenes look at Apex 2018. Carm Capriato back here in another Apex interview in my beautiful podcast studio. And there's a guy here to my right, totally responsible for pulling this off for me. Thank One you of the guys. Much. One Thank of you very guys. much, Mark. Mark Bogdansky, Senior Director of Meetings and Events for Auto Care. Thank you, Carm. And we have Chris Gardner, MAAP. God, I want to get my master's someday, <laughs> Chris. I'm jealous. I have my AAP. Chris is Vice President of Programs and Member Services. For Automotive Aftermarket Suppliers Association, and both associations, AASA and Auto Care, own this show and run it. So, can I ask a crazy question? Are you like co workers here? I mean, does all the weight of pulling on a great conference land on your shoulders? I think essentially, you know, we, <laughs> we're as much co workers as we are with the uh, folks we work with in our own associations, I'd say. That's a great point. Uh, yeah, we work together closely. We have no choice, but Apex is such a huge part of the industry and to the 
responsible for the success of our individual associations, that it becomes as important sometimes, if not more important, than you know sometimes what we do for individual members and for our own associations. So because of that, we're, we have no choice but to partner and work well so together. So it's a blur. I mean, it really yes. blurs into one. And it does. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes it, it it creates some uh some interesting strategic alliances sometimes because you have to you have to keep in mind what's important for Apex compared to what's important for your association, compared to what's important for the other association and and kind of you know, there's some internal struggle sometimes making sure that what is best for your association while may or may not be what's best for Apex and figuring out how to play that game and straddle that line and I think we both face that, you know, on a on yeah. a regular basis. So Absolutely. Now, to add to that our teams work well together. Yeah. I mean, partially because of Mark and myself and our teams. It's also because of our leaders absolutely, uh, absolutely mandate that we create a culture of working together and making the success of Apex the priority. I think I think we actually saw that this morning on the keynote. I was saying to both, you know, we say Bill and Bill. We're so used to saying Bill and Bill, but Bill, you know, Bill Hanvey and Bill Long are so comfortable working together that it, it makes it much easier for the rest of us to work together. So it kind of goes from the top down for that. So. Mm-hmm. I, I so badly wanted to have Bill Long and Bill Handy back in the studio this year, but we couldn't work the schedules out. But last year, for my audience, please go back and listen to Bill and Bill. They, they just It was a great interview and a great launch for uh, my, my first podcast uh, back in 2017. Guys, uh, it's a phenomenal event. I feel a, a really strong buzz. When I heard the the dialogue this morning, just before the keynote, Bill and Bill really kind of summed up that they care so much about the service professional being here and the programs that are aligned for them. Well, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's the guys who are throwing away the box that matter the most. You know, none of us are here without them. And so it's the end user that dictates everything else for us. And it really, the whole supply chain moves upwards. And it's the guys who are... Uh, the end users that dictate to the distributors and to the jobbers what they want, distrib- you know, dictate to the manufacturers how it's all going to work. So. You know, Chris, you're from the supplier side. Yeah. They can't do it without the service professional. How are the suppliers embracing uh, the mobility park and the, and the improved dialogue that's going on and training for the service professional? With open arms. And they're, they're embracing it because they do recognize the importance of the shops, both in he- educating the shops and technicians on how to service new technologies, new technology-enabled vehicles. Uh, you know, there weren't always thousands and thousands of repair professionals at Apex. We've done a lot of work to get them to come to provide education and trainings and and demonstrations so they'll be here. The suppliers did not traditionally create their experiences, their booths, their their, uh, demonstrations for techs. They were more for their distributor customers. But that's changed a lot because they do recognize how important it is that the shops and the technicians sell their brands, order the right parts, service the cars well, and learn how to deal with these new technologies. That's so important. Now, I can't help but mention the fact that when you say I'm going to Las Vegas for Automotive Week and people always say, are you going to SEMA? And I say, no, I'm going to Apex. Thank you, Carm. (laughs) And and I, trust me, and and, and, and it bothers the heck out of me. I was on an airplane direct flight from Buffalo here and everybody was going to SEMA. I bet you you could tell on that plane who's going to SEMA and who's going to By the way they were dressed? I bet I'm saying you could tell who's going to Apex and who's going to SEMA. I I bet you. picked them right up. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) So the reason that I bring that up is do you get any residuals because SEMA's, you know, down at the convention center? Do do, do people come over here and say, hey, listen, I'm in this industry. There's this whole professional side, uh, you know, the, the, the training yeah. and talking to executives and seeing seeing the newest parts. Yeah, absolutely. We, were, we actually work very closely with SEMA. And it's, uh, you know, similar to how our two associations work closely together, we actually collectively work very closely with SEMA um, on the whole week and making sure that the week is, is productive for everybody. Um, and we work hard to make sure that we know a lot of, the folks are coming to SEMA, but we want to make sure they know to come to Apex and see what we have. And we've grown our underhood training programs, and we've grown a lot of the programs for the service professionals and the end users so that they have a reason to come over here and learn more about what we're doing and the business we're doing over here. You know, we know SEMA is a car show, and they want to go over here, and they want to go over there, and they want to see what's going on. But there's a lot of really great things over here. And I think over the last few years, we're seeing more and more of them come over here. Uh, more and more of them are making time to make sure they get over here. And uh, 
it's important that they continue to do that because there's a lot of training that's going on here for them. And there's a lot of business that goes on for them here so that they can be better informed about what they're going to do for their business back home. So when you're getting together and talking about uh, really making an improved experience for the service professional, are you guys collaborating together or have you just basically said, listen, Auto care, you handle that side. No, it's a, always a collaboration. It's collaboration. Everything's good, collaboration. Good to hear. Okay, great. Because we can't do it without the suppliers. The, one of the great things I will say about Chris and ASA is yes, they represent the suppliers, but the industry knowledge in general that Chris brings is not just the supplier side, it's an overall 360 industry knowledge. So, you know, we work well together because he has a complete industry knowledge. So it's not just taking the supplier side of everything. It's, okay, so he understands what the supplier attitude may be about something, but also understands what the distributor opinion is going to be, you know, the the garage opinion is going to be, and so forth. So it works out really nicely. It's not just saying, well, the suppliers want this, this, and this, and that's, you know, that's really all he he cares about or or ASA cares about. ASA is very concerned about the overall uh, global supply chain, as is auto care, obviously. Have you so, learned anything from him? Uh, more than I could begin to explain in a 20-minute podcast. That's only the result <laughs> of being my age and being in the industry for so long. That's it. No, but, but, Mark, but well, it's well said. I mean, you, Have you learned anything from a, 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 an event plan? Oh, like absolutely. You? Mark, when he came, came on board to... Two years, ago. Two years ago, he brought so many new ideas about what other shows were doing successfully, and some that you know things that didn't work have, have brought to Apex. So it's been great. So name one thing which was a seed of one of your ideas for Apex. Um, I, I would say the way that we've really expanded on our keynote sessions. Okay, um, you know in the in the past uh, the Apex town halls and the Apex keynotes were a little bit, I would say, not quite as elaborate as they are now, not quite as grand. You know, they were in the middle of the week instead of kicking off Apex. We didn't necessarily have Bill and Bill up there kind of kicking off uh, Apex and giving that state of the automotive industry in the uh, aftermarket. And, and one of the things we wanted to do was say, look, Apex is the aftermarket week. And we want the two leaders of this industry getting up there and kicking off the week Tuesday morning before the hall opens. And, you know, showing how we are as an industry, how big we are, seeing where we are, what's important to us as an industry, and kicking it off from there. And I would say that was probably, at least in the last couple of years, the thing I'm most proud of right now as far as what we've done and, the last Carl, me, years. I would add to what Mark said that what he's helped bring is that keynote session that kicks off Apex, it has a true big event feel. Oh, yeah. And we are competing for the attention of exhibitors and buyers and a lot of other people. And we're competing against other shows. We're competing with for the time for, for the media. Right. And the, what has happened with our keynote session is it is a big deal. It's a big event feel, and you have to be there. If you're not there, it's actually noticed because it's such a big event. So um, thank you, Mark. How big? Uh, with 1,000 people? I mean, uh, tell me how many... Just people? under 1,000 yeah, people just under th- It was spectacular. Yeah. I, I loved... Uh, in fact, I couldn't believe the rock music that I was hearing. <laughs> in fact, I sat near one of the speakers. <laughs> I couldn't even hear myself eat breakfast. But it was fun. It was vibrant. And I thought the... Uh, it's a great multi- way to kick off the week. The multimedia piece yes. and how you did it. Of course, you had two yeah. really good speakers. Well, it's easy when you, have a, when you have a really interesting midterm election next week. It kind of... Mm-hmm. It, it, it gave us a really easy topic right away. Yes, we were trying sure. to figure out what to talk about. John but. King and Carl, yeah. whoa, they were both, I think, on different sides of the aisle, possibly, yeah. in their approach to the midterms. But it was very, it was, it was eye-opening. Yeah. And, and you know what? Frankly, I had my doubts as to what I was going to hear. But when it was done, I really felt good about it. The, the most important message that I think I took out of it, that I hope the people who were sitting in the breakfast took out of it, and that I would say for everybody listening to this to take out of it, is... You have to get involved. Get involved. Please, Absolutely. please get involved. Yeah, that and, was, that was a and every single person listening to this podcast, if you are working in a shop, if you own a shop, get involved. You know, invite your local congressman to your shop to learn about what your business is, learn how important your business is. You know, it is absolutely crucial. They want to learn about your business. And that is... The one message they both had consistently, you know, the one question everybody has is, how do we get politicians to listen to us? And how do we get them to pay attention to the aftermarket and our issues, no matter what the issue is? And they both said, so like you said, almost both sides of the aisle, they both said, you got to make sure you're getting involved. And, you know, it's great that the associations take some leadership roles in that, but they want to hear from the individuals over and over again. 
I was impressed with that message. Your congressman, your senator wants to hear from you. I never thought they cared about what I said. But when you started to hear it from the senator from Nevada and you started to hear the stories about that level of involvement, it really changed me after I've been around the horn a bunch of years now. And, 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 and I guess that's a strong message. By the way, we're not done facing the challenges that exist no. inside of our industry. I think we're just data. starting. I think we're just starting. Yeah. And, and you know, it, you're right. And it's going to get worse. Yeah. And if we don't sit with one collective voice... And, and, you know, honestly, Karl Rove's been on inside the White House. He's been inside those Senate offices. He's been inside the congressional offices. He knows. He knows what they want. He knows what the politicians want to hear. And if he's telling you, you know, they want to hear from you, they want to hear from you. And it's not as difficult as one might think. There are so many ways to get involved. And that's part of what the message was today. You can write. You can call. You can email. You can invite people to come visit. You can go to a local fundraiser. There's so many ways to get involved, and it's not that difficult or doesn't take that much time. It's a great I point. I'm talking with Jonathan Jacelli, a technical product specialist with Federal Mogul Motor Parts. So, Jonathan, how does a service professional get the guru on the go van to their shop? There's a couple ways. We do what we call cold calls, where we go around and just visit shops based on uh, geographics. And there's also times where we team up with outside sales reps from other parts distributors and visit the shops on that basis. So I love this. You pull into a shop on a cold call, they see the van, and they're probably excited to see you. Yeah. I've had a couple shops where they've actually have already heard of the gurus via Facebook or social media. So when I show up, they've already been signed up and taken online classes. And now that the van's there, it's really easy to book a lunch and learn. So you're really an extension of the Garage Guru Training Centers. Yes, absolutely. So you're all done with your lunch and learn. You spend 45 minutes to an hour. Probably that's all you can really get from a busy, busy shop. What are the technicians saying about your shop visit? Oh, they love it. They thank me, you know, every second I'm walking out the door and just can't wait for me to come back again. Federal Mogul Motor Parks' Garage Gurus is your go-to source for the vehicle training, technology, and answers you need to keep your next job on track. On site, online, or on demand, the gurus are here to help keep your business and your career on the road to success. Visit fmgarageguru.com. Hey, just stopping for a moment to tell you that the December 2018 password for podcast swag is wisdom. Just go to remarkableresults.biz slash swag and enter the password wisdom and get in line for a chance to grab some really cool podcast swag. Hey, guys. Um, so you guys are really, as you said, tongue in cheek earlier, leading this immense logistical challenge I, I, it just it blows me away 550,000 square feet what can you tell our audience about you know, some behind the scenes challenges that exist to pull this thing off <laughs> I you know to me the biggest challenge is finding that next thing like mobility park. like mobility yes. and, and that's how we came up with mobility garage this year so it was mobility park when it was outside um, the logistical challenge this year was we lost our outdoor space so we had to bring it inside and it became mobility garage um, and, you know, finding that next thing. So Mobility Garage, where we're doing our underhood training, where we're doing training on alternative vehicles and alternative fuel vehicles, hybrids, electric, electric cars, ca- yeah, right. um, uh, hydrogen-powered vehicles. Uh, and, you know, we, we feel it's really important that technicians start learning on these vehicles because if you can't work on a hybrid car, if you can't work on an electric vehicle car, if you can't work on some of these cars... You're going to be out of business soon, and we and we want to make sure that you know the people aren't just going back to the dealers to work on these cars. We want them going to their local garages working on these cars. Chris, I have an observation. He has he's an outsider. He's been in auto care for two years. Uh, he's learned a lot. He sounds like an expert. <laughs> and actually, you know, one of the I think one of the challenges is Carm to take that a step further. That Mark's obviously learning how to do real quickly. And that is the challenge with a trade show is you have to combine uh, different objectives and goals. We have to take what the industry direction is and what the challenges are and who the stakeholders and constituents are and what it takes to logistically put on a show and then what types of education and training is required and meld all that together to create a product, to create an event. As Mark's learned real quickly, and he knew in previous jobs, you can't just put on a show any neutral 
type of show that would work for anybody. You have to understand the industry you're in and what the challenges are and who the players are and which the technologies and the trends and all that to be able to stay ahead of the curve, to be able to deliver what they, they need to work on vehicles, all this. Obviously, Mark's done a great job of that. And the one thing I do want to say is Chris and I might be sitting here as the uh, voices of the people who put on the show. We got huge It teams. takes a cast of, when I say hundreds, I mean literally hundreds of people putting on the show. That's well, both th- internal staffs and exactly, external. Exactly. Internal, yeah. external. Then when you get here, the numbers of people that are working on the show, you know, for to turn over the building into the show and everything and else. And you watch but, it all come together. Do you think you nailed it this year? Uh, no, I don't think you could ever nail it. But I tell you what, every year, I, my personal opinion, this is my 21st Apex, it's gotten better every single year. I would agree with that 100%. I don't think you ever completely nail it. The idea is to get better every year. Your goal is, your goal is, is to get as close to nailing it as you can. Well, sure. And then, I mean, are you walking around here, uh, Chris? Chris yes. is walking around getting handshakes and grabbed by every single person around here. Chris, Chris walks around here like a celebrity, let me tell you. That wasn't what I was going to ask. What, what I'm going to try to guess your question. All right. Because as soon as we are off this, Mark and I are literally walking around the floor to look at for next year and the next year after that. that is is my, that your question? Yes. yes. Yeah. So literally, I mean, it's scheduled for 2 o'clock. I'm not joking. It's, it's scheduled for 2 o'clock to walk around and say, yeah. I like that. I don't. Ooh, this could work next year. We yep. can move this exactly. year. Is it, and I is think it, to is, Chris's point, it's not just next year. So what are we in? 2018, right? So it's 19. We're already thinking 20, 21. Right. You know, we're thinking two. Th- it's, this is a... You know, 12, 14, 16, even 24-month process right now. How much input from the uh, the members of the association are you getting to help you forge to next year? We both have uh, show committees. Both from both associations independently have show committees that we get a lot of feedback from. Right. And then we, we kind of each take that and we share the information that we've each gotten with each other. And then, uh, then we kind of figure out, you know, what direction we want to go from there. And we've gotten some great, great feedback from our show committee. ASA has obviously mm-hmm. gotten some great feedback from theirs, and we, you know, some ideas are great, some ideas are not so great, and, yep. we, and that's kind of our job to figure out what we want to go with and what we don't. We also collect information from board members. Yep. We also visit other international global trade shows. Yep. Uh, we, when we, we, we collect data from a lot of different areas. We also have a survey that um, we, oh, have a great, we have a great, we have a great uh, return rate on our survey. We do an we do an attendee survey. We do an exhibitor survey. We're talking about what hundreds um, yeah. of responses to thousands, the survey. Thousands, 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 thousands of yeah. responses to the survey. So we get we get great responses from there. We get great ideas from there. You know, we try to tweak what we can. Um, you know, from things that we've heard. Have you walked the show floor yet? Yeah, part yes. Okay. What trends are you seeing from the exhibitors? So I walked the floor two years ago. When I had just accepted the job at Auto Care, knowing absolutely nothing about this industry, the difference the, between two years ago and now is how much technology is in every single booth on the floor now compared to two years ago. This is rapidly becoming a technology show. You know, there are every every single booth in some way, shape, or form has technology in their booth. Where I don't think that was the case two it's years. It's just ago. like CES is becoming more of an automotive show. Kind of, sort kind of, of, whatever. Yeah. To some extent, you and but, I talked about that on yeah, our podcast. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would agree. Technology is the biggest change over the last several years, but it's coming in in uh, three areas. One is technology used to market products, so not actually in the part, but just marketing them and whatever. Another is technology and digitization of supply chain and processes and data and cataloging and ordering and all this. And then third is we're starting to see, and that is technology or digitization of actual parts and products. And that's what we're just starting to see some of that. Explain digitization to me. So uh, applying sensors to parts, being able to have software integrate with parts. Smart parts. Smart parts. uh, Smart parts. parts. Writing to, reading from, uh, systems that... uh, are improved or enhanced by software downloads, all these things. That's think, just starting. And I think as you see more about ADOS and, and everything, oh, that's, that's really oh, that's, what's... I'm glad you brought that that's up. That's what's... A lot of ADOS this year. Yeah, a lot of ADOS as you're walking around the floor. A lot of it is focused on ADOS, and I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, as ADOS is starting to really hit the aftermarket, you're starting to see a lot of the suppliers on the floor focus on that at this show. Absolutely. That, there, there's we, got, we have a lot of educational content on yeah. ADOS this year. It, it is... 
probably second, third, or fourth most important issue facing our industry. You know, access to vehicle data is one. Recruiting new talent to the industry is one. But for the independent repair community to be able to service cars that are equipped with ADOS going forward is a huge challenge and a huge opportunity for those who figure it out. I'm going to interview Joe Register tomorrow. We're going to talk about SVI, Secure Vehicle Interface. It's above my pay grade right now, but I spent some time speaking to Joe about it, and I said, I am so, I I so badly want to do this interview, Joe. I'm telling you a little behind the scenes. So he decided to tell me from his perspective what I should know so that I could do the interview with him. And his final comments to me, and I got to get him to say it in my interview tomorrow, he said, Carm, if people don't pay attention to ADIS today, they won't have a clue the secure vehicle interface is made. Right. But the, the one thing also that I will say is if you're not paying attention to data access and SVI, you won't have a business in five or ten years. And, and that's the truth. That, that's so it all it all comes together. It's it's ADIS, it's SVI, it's data access, it's all of it. And it's it is absolutely paramount. And it really does go back to that service professional and the independent repair shop, how vital it is that they are paying attention to this. Because if you don't you are not going to have a, you're not going to be able to stay in business because unfortunately people are not going to be able to come to you to work on your car anymore. He's learned a lot, Chris. I'm telling you. Love it's it. impressive. I, I so love it. You're speaking my language here. <laughs> From but, the podcast, I would say, actually. I yeah. love it. I download it every week. I love it. All right, baby. I love you. <laughs> Here's your $10 bill. Yeah. That tells me he's learning from you. That's what I'm saying. And your guest. And his guest. He's learning from these incredible I've pulled talented. speakers, actually, from his guests. Nice. I have. We've, we've, we've pulled speakers from his guests. <laughs> I know. That's great. So, uh, in our final words... We'll promote this maybe next year, next August, uh, maybe next June to in, entice the service professional to get their butts here at Apex. What are you going to tell them? I'm hoping to see an expanded mobility garage next year mm. that has more shop equipment, shop technology, that has an expanded underhood training for them where they can really get in under uh, under the hood and... Also under the car. We've, you know, one of the things that we've done under hood now for two years in a row, one of the things that some of the suppliers have asked us is, okay, it's great you're doing under hood. How about we get a lift and get under the car to do some training? You know, so we're starting to get suppliers come on us saying, hey, we want to get involved also, but we got parts and services that are, we can't do under hood. We do under the car. I'd love to see us expand to do that. Really be able to expand that, that service professional training that we're doing all week long. And, uh, and again, I, I really, you know, the ADOS, the alternative fuel, I think it's absolutely critical that we are working on hybrid cars, on electric cars. Uh, for example, Tesla cannot handle the volume that they need, and very soon they're going to wind up saying, okay, you don't have to take your Tesla back to do the dealers anymore. You can take it to an independent shop, but we need the independent shops to know how to work on them. And that's why we have training on Teslas going on here. And the guys who are teaching the Tesla dealerships here the guys who are training the Tesla dealerships are here ready to train the independent service shops about how to work on Teslas. That's good news. For that reason. Wow. Because they know what's coming. And we want our service repair shops to be ready to do that. So for me, I want to see an, uh, an expanded mobility garage next year so that our independent service repair shops have something to work on. So I would say uh, number one is Apex is going to do everything it can with a lot of what Mark just said is is to help help make this happen, and that is to get more repair shops and technicians to Apex. We recognize how difficult it is to leave their shop to get here. But we're creating, between the Mobility Garage and all the demonstrations and the educational sessions, uh, are, are, is content that they cannot do without. So we're, we're, we have plans for, for several years out to increase and expand all of that to make sure that there is a return on their investment for taking time to be here. The second thing I would say is for all levels of the supply chain, we have a lot of content in our educational sessions that look at all those things Mark just mentioned, but look at when they're going to happen and how many cars are going to be impacted and how much of the car parts going to be electrified and so on. We have numerous sessions where different people, different experts and market research firms that are looking at that and can help people who come to Apex understand when they're going to be impacted by these things. All of that has got to figure into a company's business plans. They've got to know when to invest in training, equipment, uh, and all, and, and 
they have got to be able to fit their repair shops to be able to handle these cars. So, you know, it's not just about the training. We brought in RLO this year, who have done a fantastic job of actually doing some business management for us for the shops. You know, and they've, you know, RLO is well known. Yep. And I know you've had Vic on several oh, times. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's come in, and Vic and Dan have come in, and they've put together a fantastic program yep. for our shops for our business management. You know, so it makes sense to come here and learn about, you know, how to recruit good talent, how to keep good talent, how to invest in your shop, how to, you know, those kind of things. So it's not just about getting under the hood, and it's about, so it's not just about training on a vehicle, but it's also about building your business. And Barry Barrett, I I believe, is here probably working with them, too. He's the director of training. Well, look at great summary. However, we're in Las Vegas, and Las Vegas is kind of a fun city. There are so many we gorgeous are? hotels. <laughs> are we? Uh, we did, wouldn't did, know. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't know. <laughs> right. and, uh, maybe that's part of the draw, guys. Right. Is that not only can they handle fifty thousand just being at Apex, but there's restaurants. There's now hockey here and football here. I mean, this town is becoming more vibrant than ever. I mean, so I guess it's a destination, a learning destination. And and every year it's going to get bigger and better, and the service professional will probably continue to eclipse any idea of the numbers that you ever anticipated. Yeah, I don't think it hurts that the show is in Vegas. No, it doesn't. Now, obviously, we have to compete and make sure they're here. They 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 come to the show, but but when they're here after a day of training, and I would say see a show, eat a great dinner, sure. And 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 honestly, I would say you know plan on spending Friday at SEMA. We're not open on Friday. They're open. Spend spend Wednesday and Thursday here. Get some training. Go over to see him on Friday. Great advice. Love it. You know. Thank you, Chris Gardner from AASA and Mark Bogdansky from Auto Care. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. This is a lot of fun. Anytime. Appreciate it. Great. Hey, thank you, Chris Gardner and Mark Bogdansky for the success of Apex 2018. Your associations indeed provide our aftermarket something to look forward to every year. This episode's key talking points can be found at remarkableresults.biz slash E385. Hey, a new page on the website allows you to watch CarmCast every week. Yes, a new weekly live show where I just may share some sage wisdom of my own to commandeer all ships to their desired location. Enjoy the day. Talk soon. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time... 